All right. So uh, it's going to be a somewhat fast-paced talk to wake you up in the morning. Uh, and I'm going to present uh, two different topics, uh, some molder work from uh, December on how to train bolts and machines on near-term hardware, and some very, very recent work from two days ago on uh, quantum deep learning in general uh, using quantum enhanced optimization. OK, so quantum approximate bolts and machines. So let's start with a high-level overview comparing you know, annealers. And, and uh, well, first, I'll introduce what is a Boltzmann machine. I mean, this is a specialist audience, so I'm going to go go pretty fast here. So what we're trying to do is we have a model made of, of a bunch of spins, you know, tiny magnets. We couple them in a bunch of ways, and we put a bunch of biases. And their statistics at, at equilibrium, at thermal equilibrium, should uh, give you some reduced statistics on a subset of spins that you call the visibles. The visibles are going to represent your data, and the hiddens are going to represent correlations in your data. And you're going to model your data uh, via this, uh, via an equilibrium type model. So the goal of such a model, as I said, is to model data with the visible units. You want to replicate the distribution of the data. So your goal is going to be to you know, minimize some metric that quantifies uh, distance between the uh, distributions. And for example, a KL divergence, a relative entropy, classically. Uh, so your goal is going to be to tune the parameters of your model and tune the, you know, all, all sorts of parameters, like the couplings and biases and temperature even, uh, to best model your data. So that, uh, you know, let's say you have certain data points, but you want more data points from the same distribution that you had. Uh, but you don't have access to those data points, then this model is generative. It could give you new data points. And it uh, could be supervised, could be unsupervised. OK, so you know, classically, you'd use a bunch of Monte Carlo techniques, and we heard about those. Or you could use quantum computers. How would, how would you use quantum computers uh, to train Boltzmann machines? Well, first of all, you need to quantize your model. So you put hats on everything. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, and there's different types of. Uh, quantum hardware. There's the quantum analog computers, I called, like D-Wave annealers. There's quantum digital computers, which are these fabled, perfect, uh, error-corrected, unicorn land uh, <laughs> quantum computers. And there's quantum approximate uh, computers, which are this near-term hardware. So I'm going to talk a bit about how you would train a Boltzmann machine in all those paradigms. So in analog, uh, in analog computing, you do Gibbs sampling. And it's, it's analog. It's an analogy to the, to the algorithm you're trying, to, you're trying to do, right? So the physics of the system is enacting the physics that you're trying to simulate. So the physics of the chip are in direct analogy with the algorithm. So you know, your, your time evolution here is represented as like the smooth uh, path of uh, evolution, right? It's, it's, it's analog. Uh, so caveats, you know, because it's so uh, you know, close to the algorithm you're trying to do, it's less flexible. So you know, there's problems with physical temperature because you're bounded by how cool you could cool off your chip. You know, you have to connect things directly, right? Which is really hard. Uh, and you know, because you have to have this connectivity, uh, then you don't have a choice but to use qubits that are pretty widespread. And so you get a lot of noise because they have a, you know, big. They're just macroscopic, and anything pretty big is gonna average out, right? It's gonna thermalize. So, and there's all sorts of problems on how to embed your problem on the on the annealer. All right. So theoretically, you know, I could simulate physics in arbitrary connectivity, an arbitrary effective dimension if I had a, just a perfect quantum simulator. Right? That's the original dream of quantum computing. I'd have virtualized physics, and you know, I could simulate the arbitrary accuracy. Everything would be great. But the caveat is I need over billions of gates, and so I need fault tolerance. So is there something in the near term? Right Here I'd, I'd be like trying to simulate staying close to the the adiabatic path via quantum simulation techniques. Uh, so in, in the near term, is there something that's in the same philosophy that I wouldn't have, I could swap around things, I could have arbitrary connectivity, but it's low depth, right? It's not billions of gates. And the answer is yes, and that's what we showed today. It's leveraging, uh, it's kind of like a QAOA ansatz for near term uh, quantum classical hybrid optimization to do Gibbs sampling. And I'll talk about how to leverage Gibbs sampling to train Boltzmann machines in a second. So the classical and the quantum computer fic, uh, share the optimization load. They work together. 
And in a sense, you know, it's like I'm trying to get from point A to point B. Quantum simulation is trying to stay close to the path. QAOA is just trying to get to the end point no matter what, right? And it's near term implementable, as we'll see. OK, so technical stuff. How do you train a Boltzmann machine once you have Gibbs sampling, right? I'm trying to model some data with uh, an, uh, an equilibrium model. So every, every time I have a new guess for a bunch of parameters, I need to be able to sample the distribution of, of the thermalized state with those new parameters and then compare it to the distribution I want, right? So let's say I have a class of Hamiltonians that are parameterized like this, and I have a bunch of parameters theta. Uh, what I want to do is minimize the relative entropy between my visible units and the data. So can I do just gradient descent on the relative entropy? Well, sampling the relative entropy is pretty hard. So what you could do is uh, maximize the log likelihood instead. So it's minimizing an upper bound. Uh, this is work by uh, Melko and uh, others from uh, D-Wave. And uh, so we use the same update rule as you would on, on a D-Wave. And what you need to do there, um, let's say you have a parameter you want to update. You gotta you gotta look at the constant, in, you know. You gotta look at the operator that's in front of your uh, your parameter, and you gotta sample uh, as clamped sampling and unclamped sampling, also called positive phase and negative phase, just because of the the math. So what you want to do is you want to force your data. You want to force a you want to force a potential that's give you gives you infinite penalty for having your visibles being uh, not in agreement with the data points. Uh, and then you want to thermalize the rest of the network, right? And that's clamp sampling, and you average over all your data points. And then you subtract what your current natural equilibrium is. So you want to get closer to the average of satisfying all data points in the visible units, and you want to get further away from where you are. So let's, let's unpack this. Let's say I want to update just you know, a coupling here. Uh, then, OK, so I, I, I look at my formula. Oh, I got to sample correlations of spins. All right, let's say my data set's a bunch of bit strings. I convert that, that to spin up, spin down. So now what I need to do is sample these correlators for all my data points, average over all my data points, by clamping the visible units to each of those spin configurations, and then sampling thermalized unclamped. So it looks like this. You just uh, you average over all your data points. So you have, you know, if you have D different data points, you have D uh, sampling steps. And then you have the negative phase, which is unclamped Gibbs sampling. All right, so uh, for inference and uh, for RBMs, uh, things simplify. For general Boltzmann machines, it's a bit more complicated. I won't dive too much into it. Um, so another subfield that we connect with is classical quantum variational algorithms. Uh, so the goal of such algorithms, they're for circuit model, by the way, um, uh, is to find a state that minimizes some expectation value of a Hamiltonian, right? Uh, so what you do is you have a parameterized class of circuits, and you have an optimization loop that the CPU sends a, a classical parameter to the QPU. The QPU uh, shoots back an expectation value, and there's a loop. The classical computer is tasked with optimizing uh, the expectation value with respect to the variations of the parameter, and then you keep doing this until the minimums reach. What's cool about this is because you know you kind of uh, work together between the QPU and the CPU, there's not as much coherence time required to have pretty cool, useful algorithms. So the QAOA, this is kind of a slide showing the math connecting from adiabatic to trotterized simulation to QAOA. Uh, the QAOA is like uh, I take a, a quantum simulation circuit of a, so this would be a continuous time evolution, you know, it's nice and smooth. This would be a trotterized simulation. Your operators would be these alternating between the cost and the mixer Hamiltonian. And then the QAOA is like if you took this and then you just uh, chunk the parameters to be big instead of being very small steps, right? And it's just alternating operators. We, we've all seen, uh, seen this this week. All right, so the algorithms that we use uh, to train Boltzmann machines, well, what we'll need is something that prepares thermal states. So how do you leverage QAOA to prepare thermal states? Well, what you do is you pump in some entropy at the beginning. And then you try to minimize the energy with QAOA. So then if you, if, you, uh, if you have entropy fixed and you minimize the energy, well, then to some extent, you're going to minimize the free energy. And the free energy gives you is actually equal to the relative entropy to the thermal state. That means you're going to get close to the thermal state if you minimize the free energy. So the way we do it, we start with an easy thermal state of each individual qubit. It could be one of these. And then we use the QAOA to minimize the, the Boltzmann machine Hamiltonian uh, with a typical mixer. Uh, so this works well, but like you know, you're kind of bound by, 
your guess of entropy and, and uh, you know, it's, it's, you're not fully minimizing the free energy, but it, this works pretty well and it has very few parameters, uh, hyperparameters to optimize uh, classically. So another one that's not in the paper yet, but uh, that's, it's variationally optimizing both the entropy and energy. In this case, you, you have a parameter for the temperature of each qubit at the beginning, and then you use the same QAOA. In this case, you know the von Neumann entropy going into the system. The von Neumann entropy is a lower bound to your actual classical entropy of the standard basis measurements. Uh, so then, in a sense, you're minimizing a von Neumann free energy, which is an upper bound to the true free energy. So you have better odds of getting close to the thermal state, because you're optimizing both energy and kind of maximizing entropy. So, uh, but this has more parameters, but, uh, which is less efficient to optimize. But I'll, come, I'll, I'll talk about a general algorithm that doesn't care how many parameters you, you have, and it, it just uh, it works really well. Uh, that's later. So the quantum approximate Boltzmann machine is leveraging this quantum approximate thermalization to, to do the sampling to train Boltzmann machines. Simple enough. And uh, a little trick we came up with, which is really weird, is uh, you could clamp to a mixture of different states, because every run of the QAOA, you could kind of randomize which which uh, uh, data point you input in the visibles. This not only is much faster, because you only have one run of QAOA to do for all data points, uh, but it actually gives much better performance. So this is what happened when we simulated it on a, the algorithm on a noisy, simulated noisy circuit uh, model quantum computer with depolarizing noise. Uh, the task was to decode like a two-bit hidden subspace. Uh, and as we could see, you know, for various levels of noise, it still performs well. The KL divergence minimizes. On the right is the quantum randomized version, and on the left is the non-quantum randomized version. Uh, it performs better than you know, uh, scikit-learn on your laptop in some cases. So, so that's cool. Uh, so if you wanna if you wanna train Boltzmann machines and you have a circuit model quantum computer, uh, use QAOA and use our algorithm. Uh, this is the variational entropy variant. For the, such a small scale, it's not it's not gonna change much. It helps a bit, you know if you tweak the, the temperature, but I imagine at a larger scale, uh, varying the entropy helps too. All right, the code's available on GitHub. Michael Broughton is my co-author on both papers. Uh, check out his GitHub for code for both papers. Uh, okay, so we just figured out how to do Boltzmann machines on near-term quantum computers, but you know, we're all interested in can quantum computers help with deep learning, and what, what is quantum deep learning anyways? There's parametric circuits, there's neural nets, and people call those neural, quantum neural nets, and it's all confusing. So let's compare really quickly classical versus quantum deep learning. Classical deep learning, you have a big network, it has a bunch of parameters, it's parameterized and SOTs. You have a loss function that depends on your output, you know, you have a, an output for a given input and given parameters, and you're trying to minimize often a distance to the, the desired output for uh, supervised machine learning. So you want to minimize the loss function subject to variations of the parameter. Oh, wait, that's kind of like parametric circuits. But now I have a loss operator in general, and I have a parametrized unitary, right? OK, so uh, well, if you map one to the other, and then you know how to optimize parametric circuits, then you could optimize everything, right? So, um, so this is our paper that came out two days ago. Uh, the title is provocative, but then we justify it with 80 pages of work. So, um, so I encourage you to try to read it uh, or, or talk to me after. Uh, but so, so with the quantum approximate Boltzmann machine, you know, you map it to parametric circuits. In this paper, we also map all quantum feed forward, uh, uh, all feed forward neural networks to become quantum coherent networks that are parametric circuits. So now the task is to how do you optimize the parametric circuits uh, when you want to minimize an expectation value of some operator. All right, so a classically parameterized circuit, you'd use a quantum classical hybrid optimizer. But how could we have quantumly parameterized circuits? Could I have superpositions of applying different circuits? Right, so I could have a wave function over circuits or a wave function over neural networks, right? So yeah, you, you can. So you, you convert all your gates in a certain way with uh, continuous variable parameters that are like controlled gates for each uh, parametric unitary. This is the notation. And then in each case, in each branch of a superposition, you'd apply a different unitary of a different set of parameters. The bold is for a vector. So, okay, so what we introduce is backprop with a Q, uh, backwards quantum propagation of phase errors, right? So you could plug in a superposition of parameters, uh, and 
an initial state in the compute register, and then you, f you apply your feed forward, and what you do is you apply a phase kick, an exponential, of your loss operator. You could think of that as like an energy, right? I, I'm inducing a kick on the output, and then when I, when I actually, oh, this shouldn't be a controlled gate, anyways, but uh, when, I, uh, when I apply, uh, yeah, it's the regular gate, but when I uh, apply the uncompute, my phase errors back propagate through the circuit and kick up the parameters. So the parameters feel a force dependent on how the output got kicked, which itself depends on how off of the target it was. And depending on how they affect the output, they get kicked according to the gradient, well, on average. But really, each part of the wave function gets kicked according to its local gradient. So what you could see this as is effective phase kick of the parameter. Now, never mind the compute. Now we're just going to focus on the parameters. Now these parameters, you could average a bunch of kicks for a bunch of data points, and then you get a cost function, we call it J. And now you could see that as a potential. And then you could simulate multi-dimensional continuous variable Schrodinger dynamics in this landscape of optimization to descend the landscape. And you know the mixer is like momentum squared. You could do this with quantum Fourier transforms. And so you apply these kicks of data, data induced uh, kind of stochastic kind of forces on, on, on your parameters, and this is co a coherent way to descend the landscape. So it's quantum dynamical descent. It's like QAOA on the space of parameters. Uh, so, you know, we connect it to the adiabatic theorem. We show how you could add a regularizing potential. You could slide right into a local minimum of, of the landscape. But what's cool is that you can optimize neural nets with, you know, uh, quantum dynamics. So all your, your theorems that you're proving for adiabatic stuff with tunneling and, and speed ups, you could start looking at that for all of machine learning now, all, all, of, all of deep learning, classical and quantum. Um, so we have an, a, a tweak that is for near term, which is MomGrad, which is because these phase kicks are like kicking the momentum, I could just measure the shift in momentum, and on average, I, I could get the gradient, the local gradient. Here we kick really hard and it's exaggerated, but uh, we call it momentum measurement gradient descent. And that's upstairs. And as you can see, we reset to a pointer state that we use. We use Gaussians because it's easy with Fourier transforms. But basically, this is a cubic, uh, cubic potential kicking it. So the derivative is, is, a, is a second order uh, polynomial. So then you could see that each part of the wave function gets kicked according to the gradient of where it was. QDD just does kind of a coherent uh, evolution uh, in, in, in parameter space. Uh, rather than uh, rather than quantum classical, so we do a lot more in this paper. It's a massive paper. We do parallelization batching. You know, we wanted to write it almost like a textbook. Swarm optimization. You could have discrete parameters. You could optimize over architectures of networks. We have a bunch of regularization techniques. We have a meta learning technique where the optimizer optimizes itself. It's like QAOA optimizing QAOA. Uh, that's pretty cool. Um, and we have a, a really in depth. Uh, analysis of backpropagation for classical neural networks, and that's really important for parametric circuits if we're going to solve the, you know, the Baron Plateau's problem of vanishing gradients. We got to understand how uh, signals of gradients backpropagate through the circuit, and now we can with this formalism. We also have something which is uh, hybrid quantum classical uh, parametric circuit hybrid with a, a classical deep neural net. They're connected together. You could backprop through the whole thing. And we have um, more, more parametric circuit applications fleshed out than you could display on one slide. So that's it, quantum deep learning. All right. All right, thank you very much for this nice talk. So uh, we have time for some questions. Are there any questions? Or is everybody still asleep? Perfect. <laughs> Hi, uh, thanks hey. for the great talk. Uh, we did talk about it yesterday a bit, but um, the question uh, I want to ask is, is there something analogous to the step size that we normally have in classical optimization algorithms uh, here? When yeah. yeah, so the QAOA parameters, we relate that. So in the gradient descent variant, we relate the learning rate. Uh, the learning rate becomes, so if you shift the momentum and then you kick by a certain constant times the momentum squared, right? You're going you're gonna to go down the gradient, which is the, the product 
the, learning, the classical learning rate becomes the product of both your QAOA uh, hyperparameters for that iteration. So we really connect both uh, methods from classical and, and quantum uh, deep learning there. And uh, yeah, and to optimize those hyperparameters, again, you could just do a meta learning loop, which is really cool because classically, usually you have to do a grid search over hyperparameters. And in this case, we're kind of doing a grid search, but it's in quantum superposition. So you could kind of, over one training, you could query exponentially many possible neural networks and optimize uh, over the space of trained neural networks, right? You, so you could have a superposition of hyperparameters, and in each case of the superposition, you have a different network at the end, and then you could optimize that uncompute all that, and then gradient descent over the space of hyperparameters.